uh, cosmetic dermatologist who practices uh, right here in Manhattan on Fifth Avenue, Dr. Lewis uh, Faden. And we have two models with us, but let's begin with you, Dr. Faden. And let me introduce the ladies first. Annie Anki Crook is next to you, and Olinka Podani next to her. And welcome, uh, everybody, to our show. Let's talk about acne and tell me what you think of it. Acne is primarily a hormonal imbalance. It is seen both in adolescence, but it goes on into adulthood. The problem with, that, with acne, untreated, it will scar. And that's the thing you have to stop. There's a vicious cycle, an acne lesion, and it'll go on to a thing which will cause a scar. Not only does it, does it scar the skin, but it scars the mind. It affects people's personalities. For example, a young adolescent, a girl of 15 or 16, she won't go out to the parties. She'll be covering her face. She'll wear her hair down. She gets frustrated. She gets angry. It'll affect her schoolwork. So it's a, it's a multifaceted problem. And that's the whole physiology part, but the main thing is now, what can we do? Well, what about adult acne? Why does it uh, hit certain adults? Well, certain people are prone to it. There is certainly a hereditary background. If your mother or father had it, there's a chance that you may have it too. And the thing is, is to seek help. Just find somebody who doesn't just say, oh, it's acne, forget about it. Because it won't go away. And if it does, it'll go away with a scar. And these are the things we're going to talk about today, the, the kind of modalities okay. to treat it. Well, let's talk about Anki and uh, what her story, what, what her problem was like. Well, uh, I started to get back in when I was 17 years old and I came here to the United States and I was here on vacation and I started to break out and I had very good skin before I came here. So I just, I just got frustrated, I started to pick on it, I started to squeeze and then I went back to Europe and I went to different kind of cosmeticians and it just got worse, worse and worse and worse. So then I came here again and uh, people said that I should see a dermatologist, so I did. And I came there and he wanted to try collagen shots. That he said that would help me. And I did several, several of them, and, uh, but it didn't help me at all. And then um, I'm doing some modeling and it's really frustrating. Quite sure. Her. So you and went to see Dr. Fader? Yes, I and did. what did you recommend for her? And, and this instance, I think she needs a dermal abrasion uh -huh. with a chemical peel, which is why I do mainly cosmetic surgery and cosmetic dermatology. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, you can see a whole clip on that. I think yeah, let's roll the clip right now. Very we interesting what that. we do. Uh, this was done for uh, this patient, and it can be done in the face of active disease as well as for the scarring. Now, if you see over there, I marked the face with little blue dots, and now there's a very fast diamond wheel called the phrase. I'm freezing now to make the skin hard. I begin using this wheel, which goes 20,000 rotations per minute, and I'm planing the whole face down. Now, mind you, she has no pain during this, because she has anesthesia in the arm and in the vein, and she mm. lo gets local injections into the, into the skin. Now, you see how fast and how quick this is, and we're doing the whole face at one time. The operation takes about an hour and 15 minutes. You're sanding the face that's down. That's correct. Now, that's, that's a diamond wheel, mm. and it, it rotates very quickly, and you see me freezing the area in addition to... Uh, you, having the injections in the veins to give her the, the anesthesia. She's a fully awake, but she has no pain. And you I can don't see anything. But now what happens when it wears off? Well, uh, when it wears off, she, she wakes up and the pain is minimal at best, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I finish that whole operation, I use a special acid to peel it with a dressing. The bandages come up the next morning. And she was out, I think, six days after the operation was done. Am I right? How many yeah, days? Ten, ten days. Ten days. Mm -hmm. yeah, and she then went back to work. I, I'm just curious, how is it that something uh, done to the exterior yes. helps if this is a hormonal imbalance? Surprisingly enough, even though there's no cure for acne, acne can be well controlled. And collagen is another adjunct we can use to touch up things, but in her case, her acne, was, her scarring was too extensive. The acne, surprisingly enough, with dermabrasion, in my experience and many other doctors, will just decrease the uh, occurrence of the acne. It's not a cure, but it'll come back much less. So mm. you still have to treat the acne. You acne may have to, but patients who come after the operation come so much less than frequently after uh -huh. the, uh, the operation. Let's talk about Olinka, and let's begin by showing you a before picture of uh, her. This is what uh, she looked like before she went to Dr. Faber. Coming. Where is she? It's hiding. There it is. You see, there are two depressions right in the side of the face. I think she had... What, what happened? Uh... I had a serious infection which was persistent for a long time, and because I treated it, left deep scarring. This mm -hmm. is something I'd like to tell everybody in the audience. If you have any kind of infection, however minor it might seem to you, you should have it treated because it can leave permanent scarring. I had uh, a doctor inject me with collagen, and uh, as a result, I have about 90% improvement. It's hardly detectable. It will also be followed up with a dermabrasion to get a perfect result because now I have become picky and I'd like to have 100% improvement. Mm. Mm. So you treated her with collagen? Uh, in this case, yes. We use collagen in her hair. 
Uh, you see, there's the thing, uh, people have used silicone in the past. Collagen, I think, is much more safe. It's fully FDA approved. It doesn't, it doesn't shift. In the right hands, it is very effective. You can go to a doctor who likes this kind of work and who really specializes in it. All right, fine. Let's uh, take a break and uh, give you a chance to call in with your questions about the subject, and we'll come right back in just a moment. <laughs> now with uh, Dr. Louis Aceda and uh, two models who have suffered from adult acne, Anki Cook and Olinka Podani. And let's go to the phone. Good morning. You're on the morning show. Good morning. Hi. I have a 20 year old son that you, uh, you has acne and uses the aloe from the aloe plant. And when he uses it, it clears it up, but then it occurs again. What can he do with Well, uh, I think, if, if, truthfully, if he has a problem, he shouldn't be treating himself. He should seek a doctor who's interested in treating this kind of disease and be under his care. I think aloe has uh, many uh, pluses and many minuses. It hasn't been well studied. And I think if he really has a problem to prevent any severe sequelae, such as scarring, he should be under the care of a doctor and not treat himself. What about over-the-counter products? To, uh, we have some of them right here. You know, we often hear what to use, what not to use. The average patient does not have any idea of what to use for the treatment of acne, and these are just external things. Now, yes. acne is not just from, it may present itself on the skin, mm -hmm. but it's an internal problem. Mm -hmm. So they may need antibiotics, they may need injections of different things into the skin, they may need chemical peelings, they may need a, a host of things to be used on them, and how can the average patient possibly know what to do? But how safe are things like tetracycline? The tetracycline, surprisingly, is very safe, and in the proper hands, uh, it's been used literally hundreds of millions of times for many things. Yeah. Now, tetracycline is one of the mainstays of treatment of acne, but there are new tetracyclines, such as things called minocin, and there's a brand new drug called Accutane, which has just been uh, out now about a year and a half. It's an excellent drug in a very, very severe case, mm -hmm. but you can't use it indiscriminately. It's a very dangerous drug. And these are prescription drugs? Yes, indeed. Okay. To the audience, hi, you're on the morning show. Oh, yes, I wanted to know. I had a dermabrasion done about a year ago. Yes. I wanted to know, how do you know when to use collagen and when to do a dermabrasion? All right, I'll, this is, that's a very, very good question. When the scarring is really very, very severe and very diffuse, in my hands, I believe a dermabrasion should be done, and I do it, I follow it with a, with a chemical peeling in addition. If it's little localized areas, perhaps collagen will be enough. But if it's really severe, very, I see your scarring has been very severe in the past, so chances are the dermabrasion was the procedure and the correct one for you. Now, to, I use collagen in a case like yours to touch up after the full face dermabrasion has been done. That's what I really wanted yes. to know, because if you notice, I still do have see some, yes. some scarring on the right well, side Well, why don't you ask face? your doctor what he feels is indicated after that. Go back and ask But the again. collagen is going to have to be repeated. Collagen is a natural living substance. For example, every cell you have in your face right now, one year from now, you won't have those cells. Mm -hmm. So everyone says, well, collagen will go away. But then again, it ages, and that's a good thing. It's a natural living substance. Good morning. You're on the morning show. Hi, how are you? Good Hi. morning. Um, I'm calling about, I have very enlarged pores, and I was wondering if that might uh, be some reason why I have the acne, and how I could get rid of the large pores. Uh, I don't think uh, acne is... Uh, necessarily to do with the large pores, although in patients who have acne, enlarged pores are frequently found. In my experience, using the light chemical peeling and sometimes the dermabrasion will definitely minimize the size of the pores, but people often say, well, I'll use this, uh, this product or that product and I'll make them smaller. It'll just work for a moment. You know, when you go out into the stores yes. all the time, all these cosmetic people are constantly pushing facials. And they say for, if you have large pores, you need to do a facial. Now, what, what significance is that? The good is thing about a facial is the fact if it's done under proper supervision, and we do them in the office also, but it'll keep those large pores clean. Mm -hmm. If this material called sebum, sebaceous mm -hmm. material, will get in there and gets hard, it will stretch those pores and they don't get smaller again. So you've got to keep them clean. Facials will help do that. Mm -hmm. But just facials in and of themselves, like for acne, that's not the answer. Well, here we have a couple of models. Do you give yourself facials or have facials frequently? I do. Frequently? Um, yeah, I've been in the Dr. Feta's office. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really good. It feels really nice afterwards. And I've been doing facials before, and like I said, they squeezed and they squeezed and yeah, they squeezed. Yeah, they squeezed. Some, some of these facialists uh, really don't know what they're doing. Yeah. All right, to the audience. Yes, I have a question. I'd like to know if uh, your diet, Will it help, uh, if you change your diet, will it help your acne problem? I'm so glad you asked that question because many doctors say diet has no reason or no effect on the skin. I believe just the opposite. Diet, you are what you eat. If you have a problem with your skin or any other part of the body, if you get, say, itchy eyes after eating strawberries, don't take any more strawberries. 
If you break out from chocolate, avoid the chocolate. You yourself can give yourself the best test better than any doctor's office. If you feel a certain food is offending you, don't take any of that food for two full weeks. Then, after being off the, that thing for two weeks, test yourself. Stimulate yourself with that particular food. If you break out, if your skin uh, gets worse, if you get itchy eyes or itchy throat, you know you have a problem with that food. Avoid it. And you say the doctor's visit. You know, speaking of, of breakouts like um, reactions to things, maybe allergies, a lot of men get rashes from shaving. Yes. And sometimes they can look like acne or, or maybe even go into mm -hmm. acne. How do you prevent that? Well, it depends on the kind of skin you have. It's very often seen in people who are, who are black and their, their hair is thicker and it'll come back right into the skin. That's called pseudofolliculitis. And the best treatment for that is to get an old toothbrush and just re keep releasing those hairs from cutting in. And I think the yeah. Norilco company makes a very good uh, electric shaver for that problem. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, that so just keep releasing the, the, the hair from the skin. It's a, it's a, a physical problem, basically. That yeah. can be a severe yes, problem. Yeah. Sure can. All right, we'll continue with this in just a moment. Call us at 955-9800. Talking about um, acne this morning for adults as well as for um, teenagers, and we're talking with Dr. Lewis Fetter. All right, to the audience. Hi, could you tell me the cost of the procedure? Dermabrasion uh, in New York, I think, runs anywhere from fifteen hundred up to four thousand dollars. Why the difference? Well, I think a doctor's expertise plays a role, but I must tell you the malpractice crisis in New York has made a lot of doctors very wary about doing these procedures. And I think once that's under control, then perhaps the feet can come down. Have you ever been sued? I've never had a lawsuit. Mm. This is but you live in dread of those, don't you? You're scared, you? but I think if you have a good rapport with your patient, so the anyone can make a mistake, but if so you have a good rapport... So the doctor's fee has got a lot of uh, variables built into it. Absolutely. Including insurance. Insurance is a big, big number today. Especially if you do cosmetic surgery. I do cosmetic surgery, and as a result, my malpractice rate is very high. You know, why is it that you think that after the age of 25, you'd be rid of all this stuff? I remember in college, fighting it with my skin all the time, and I thought, oh, this will all be over in a couple of years. Wrong. I think that's, that's a, big, a big problem. Many patients walk in, in their 40s and 50s, and they say, it should be gone. I agree it should be, but it's not. And I mentioned, first thing, Diet, very important. They must, if, you're act, if you're an acne patient, mm -hmm. wash your hair every day. Very important. Very important. Don't forget that. Very important. I wash my hair every day. Yeah, especially in New York. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between a white head and a black head? Ah, you sound like Jack Palance. <laughs> the first time the audience didn't... <laughs> I am Jack Palance. The first time the audience didn't applaud. See, they know. You don't applaud black hair. Okay, fine. Go ahead. A black head is when sebaceous material becomes oxidized by the air. And a white head is usually a little inclusion area of sebaceous material. Wait, They're in the same family. Does inclusion mean infected? Not really infected, but it, co it causes a little capsule to form out, and it's a little white head. Mm. And these should be uh, opened and discharged oh. professionally. All oh, right, Doctor, no, please. Not, not, not on television, you just, I promise. I'm going to sue him right here if he keeps talking like that. I'll be nice, I'll be nice. Good morning, you're on the morning show. Good morning, Regis. Happy birthday, yeah. Thank you. Uh, my question concerns acne on the back and shoulders. Is it the same as acne on the face, or, and is the treatment the same or different? Well, it's... It's in the same family, let's put it that way. It's unfortunate when you get on the back and the chest because you really can't do dermabrasion in those areas. It will mm -hmm. scar. But it, the same treatment is employed for both areas. And uh, it is a big problem because many times on the back and the chest, it'll scar more than the, than the face. You know, you talked about these over-the-counter things briefly, but Saturday morning commercials on the radio for kids. They're scary. We hear Strike Oxy 5 and Clear Cell. Right. Are these just temporary? I think for the most part they're temporizing them, just temporary. If you need... Do they work at all? They help. Yes, they do. But the thing is, how much do you know what to use? Should you be on antibiotics in addition? Do you need injections? So if you have the problem, go to your doctor. At least even for one visit, he'll give you an idea of what you shouldn't and shouldn't do, whether you can afford to come back, mm -hmm. you know... What about ultraviolet rays? Sun is damaging to the skin. I want everyone to realize at home, these suntan parlors and sitting in front of suntan lamps over a period of time will definitely damage the skin. You're going to get premature aging of your skin, and they're going to go on and look tired and wrinkled, and you can get skin cancer from the sun. Where do you so get your tan from? I make the stuff. <laughs> do you really? I want some of that. Okay, <laughs> I really do. How do you get rid of those whiteheads and blackheads? Not being too graphic. Not you know too graphic. I mean? Well, the thing is, you have, you have to go with somebody who does this stuff oh, come professionally. Can't you get a little simple okay, thing at home? Okay, okay. Let me just, if at home, if it's a very, very superficial one, mm -hmm. you get, go in front of a, boil some water. Yeah and put a towel over the water, so it'll, not too hot now, so you can get like a little steam area. Mm -hmm. Take two tissues, 
very gently and try to express them. If they're very deep, that's not going to work. But if they're very superficial one, it'll really help. Express them. I like Boom. You like that nice word? <laughs> not too hard. What do you Dr. say? Yo! Pull them out. Here Yo! comes the IRC. <laughs> Where do you want to go? Jeff. Audience? Yes. Good morning. You're on the morning show. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, how come people over 40 get it? Is, be is it because of stress? Uh, I'm or sorry. Could you repeat the question? How come people over 40 get acne? Is it because of stress? Stress will certainly play a role when you have acne. If you're, if you're nervous and you're under tension and you keep touching your face, it'll make it worse. Remember, the skin and the nervous system are like this. So if you can relax more, I know it's not easy. It's easy for me to say that. You relax, your skin will get better. What about coffee? Coffee's nervous. Makes you nervous. Now, uh, are these young ladies entirely through with you, or are you going to continue with them? Sit around I'm going to do another No, no, I mean, I mean <laughs> Oh, I see what you mean. I see. That, that, is that the IRT? That's, that's the express. <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Olinka might need a little touch-up with uh, the collagen, and, and I think she said she wants her to have dermabrasion. Uh, she doesn't need dermabrasion, I wanted to do ask you? a question from the doctor. I want to know if I need him in my old age. Does dermabrasion remove wrinkles also? Yes, it does. Really? Mm -hmm. It can. Oh, boy. It can. Why do you combine that with the chemo? Well, the, chem the chemical peeling will just accentuate and make more deep the dermabrasion. Well, I thank you all very much for joining us today. Very interesting, Dr. Lewis. Feder. All right, we just fill in. Here in from Manhattan. <laughs> and Anki Crook, who is with the Fel fa uh, Foster, Fel? Foster Fel Fashions. And Olinka Podani, yes. thank you very much for joining us. Okay.